So even now, when I have the ability and the skill set to build a business almost overnight, because I know exactly what I'm doing, I know how I'm going to set it up, I know how the books are going to run, I know how I'm going to structure the organizational board, I know how I'm going to do the reporting and manage the business completely, it looks a lot easier than it was to get the skill set itself. I was making look a lot easier than the effort it took for me to get in that position. And that's something I would share with you all. Understand that you are going to take blows. You're not going to walk through this thing seamlessly, never getting hit by a punch, never losing money, never almost going bankrupt. It's going to happen. And it doesn't make you less. It's just going to help you understand and get hardened to the facts of the things that you have to do in order to succeed. I hope this resonates with you, particularly for you guys that are struggling in your business right now. All I would urge you and tell you to do is understand that it does get darker before the dawn and you must keep pushing through because you truly have no other choice. It's win or complete slavery. And I just want to share that information with you that it's not always been as easy as it is for me today. There are a lot of bumps I had to hit in the road to get there and I would never want to misrepresent that. I'll never forget I was 28 years old and the company was growing. We started getting into the multi-millions of dollars. And what that did is it created the scaling issue for me. And we went from having, you know, 10 guys to basically 25 guys. And I would run into these issues where guys wouldn't show up for work. They would lie about their skill set. They would steal my tools, go to the pawn shop and sell them and quit. Quality was bad. And I found myself getting angry. I would blame those guys. I would say they're bad men. And, you know, there's no good guys out there. These guys are trash and all these different things. I, was, I would get very angry about it because I just wanted a fair exchange relationship. I pay you this amount of money. You show up to work. You do your job. I never miss a payroll. And I work my ass off to continue to put work in front of you. And it was a very pivotal time because every time I hired the wrong guy, it hurt me deeply in my business. And that kind of lines up with some of the goals that I thought I was going to hit for 30. I actually had enough work to be a multimillionaire, but I couldn't find the guys that would not only show up to work, not only care, but actually follow the systems that I had put in place. And it dawned upon me as, as angry as I was at those men. And as much as I wanted to blame them, that it would never serve me to blame them. They say the definition of insanity is when you do the same thing repeatedly expecting a different result. And so for me, I had to realize that if I didn't find a different way to find and hire men, then I would constantly be faced with that issue. And it also made me take on this massive accountability for any and everything that happened in the business. And it was like this thing. And I had always believed in accountability, but I don't think I understood the amount of accountability that was gonna be needed. I win the work, I find the men, I put the systems together, boom, it should work, but it didn't. And it's like that in business, man. You think you could do everything right, you did everything right, and it still doesn't work. But that's not your ticket to get off the train of being responsible for it. You still have to jump in the cockpit and operate everything, even when things break that are supposed to work. And so that's when I kind of had a breakthrough moment that nobody was coming to save me. Only I could fix this problem, and I had to fix it through doing something massively, massively different when it came to hiring men. And when it came to nurturing the relationship between me and my men. And so I made some massive changes that have made me a lot of money in the meantime. Went in the work, the marketing, hiring estimators, some of the right people, but the people in the field the men that build America, that's a different breed of person and it takes a different breed of strategy to find the kind of individual that's willing to do that at a high level. And I feel like that breakthrough at 28 was one of the most pivotal and important parts of my career and my life today. And so I'm very grateful for it. I remember asking God why, (laughs) why this business? And I don't think I truly knew the answer to that until the last few years going through that fire, having steel all over the country, mistakes being made, leaks in roofs, 
guys getting hurt, tools getting stolen, people not paying me. All of those things made me who I am today. But it was only that small little thing of not just accountability, but ultimate accountability. Even if you do something wrong, it's my fault. Taking on accountability in that way changed my life. It matured me in ways I cannot even begin to tell you. So when we talk about taking accountability, at surface level, it seems just like you're like, okay, I'm responsible for this. But no, it's much, much deeper than that. Not only am I responsible for me, I'm responsible for you and the shit that you're supposed to do that even I didn't think in the beginning was my responsibility. You've made the right decision. The real world is the number one school in the world. That includes Harvard, Yale, and every other place that'll get you a nine to five job in a cubicle when you hate your life. Let me explain something to you about the real world. Nowhere on the planet are you going to have professors that literally work in the business that they're teaching daily while making money with a community of people doing it together with you. This isn't like school. This isn't where you have to cheat on a test. You're openly cheating together, learning from one another to make money in the best part is you don't have to worry about getting a report card because in the real world you get a paycheck. I joined the real world about three months ago and since I've joined I've made upwards of 66k now. The total amount of money I made put 5,000. It's a huge game changer. Let's discuss some things. The real world has 18 wealth building strategies to teach you directly on a daily basis open 24 hours a day with any question you could possibly have about how to make money. There's no better place on earth you made the right decision my friend I could not be more proud of you. I'll be in there, Dylan Madden's in there, Arno's in there, pushing every day to teach you how to change your life for the better, change your family's life for the better. You've made the right decision. Welcome to the family. I'll see you in Miami. You know, when it comes to loyalty, a lot of times people think it's about you or the other guy. To me, I take loyalty like quite personally. If I can't look in the mirror and know that I'm loyal to the people that I love, then how could I ever expect that love back from somebody else? A lot of people, I, I feel like they look at it like outwardly. I'm loyal to that guy. I think it's much more important to know that you're loyal in your own heart and know that your intentions are pure in your own heart and let your actions speak for those things instead of your mouth. I could go on online and say, I'm the most loyal guy on the planet. I don't need to. I know who I am. I know what I'm about. I know who I'm going to stand behind. And I know who I'm not. And for me, those things will come out through my actions much more than they will ever come out in my words. Loyalty, to me, is more intrinsic than it is extrinsic. And so it's very, very important to understand who you are, what you're gonna stand for, where that line is, and everything else will take care of itself. What about ambition? Ambition's a tricky thing. Because ambition, a lot of times, I think is directly linked to what an individual thinks they can do. And that's why it's so important for you to get up and get out of bed and get to work, particularly on your fitness, on your, your reading, and studying and understanding how the world works or how business works. Because people generally will only shoot for things inside the range they think that they're capable of. But if you're constantly training, expanding, and growing, then you start to believe you can do things you thought you couldn't do last year. And then the next year you think you can do even bigger things. And the next year you can do even bigger things. So ambition itself, to me, is when you start to build yourself as an individual, you start to gain confidence and confidence and confidence, and you start reaching further and further and further away from the things that you think you never would have thought to be possible. So ambition is a very interesting thing. A lot of people believe that you're just born with this massive amount of ambition. You know, oh, I'm gonna buy all these real estate doors. Now, most of the time, believe you're gonna buy one or two rent houses. And then the next thing you know, you understand operating income, net operating income on a big property. Then you understand the debt service. Then you understand how to raise money. And then you understand how to build relationships with people. And all these things start to compound. And then you buy a 64 unit deal out of nowhere and people call you ambitious. I wouldn't say that's ambition. I say that's a young man that trained really, really hard to put himself in a position to do an ambitious thing. 
And so for that reason, I always push people to do their best to study. There's a such thing called internal growth. A lot of the growth that I had in my life happened when nobody was looking. And it's only now that it looks like I'm buying properties all over the place or taking jets to different countries or doing big podcasts. Most of the growth I had was in the shadows for sure. Nobody saw it. I was in a podunk town in Louisiana doing my best to build my confidence towards ambition. Bars. Bars. Rapping. Doesn't Rapping. stop. Yeah, yeah. Lil Wayne ain't, ain't ready. Yeah. Lil, Wayne Lil Wayne ain't, ain't ready. ready for me, bro. <laughs> Actually, Lil Wayne, bro, I love Lil Wayne. Anyway, side note. <laughs> the best rapper alive. I mean, you do like Lil Wayne. I love Lil Wayne, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what do you think is so great about him? You know what I like about Lil Wayne? Is that he thinks for himself. He came from Holly Grove in New Orleans, a neighborhood, not the best neighborhood. I've driven through that neighborhood multiple times on the way to job sites. And he came out of it and he's his self and he has an uplifting voice. He, my favorite song by him is Let It All Work Out. I listen to it in Lambo all the time. And it just talks about all the struggles and struggles and struggles that he goes through, but he just let it all work out. And when he's faced with things like that could suppress him, like racism or where he came from or all the things that would be easy for him just to go with the flow. He stands up and says, nah, you know, there were people that were good to me. I overcame those. Yeah, those things happened, but I overcame them. And I think Lil Wayne's a hero in that way. He really is true to himself and what he actually thinks, regardless of what people are going to say about him. And I think anybody that does that's a hero. What do you think masculinity means nowadays? Masculinity? With the, yeah, with all the bullshit that there is out there. What, what does it mean to you? Yeah, so I, I think that that's a very interesting subject. I, we live in a world that, where there's a lot of people that push masculinity by screaming and yelling and acting like there's something that they're actually not. You know, you got all these guys out here wearing camo and shit, making guys run, crawl through the mud, and... They're acting like that's going to make other men masculine, you know. And that couldn't be further from the truth. A lot of times, some of the most masculine men you'll ever meet are the ones that are soft-spoken, who have a quiet confidence about them, and will probably punch you in the fucking mouth if you get sideways with them. But they'll never tell you that they're going to. And they'll even try to back away. I always say that my definition of a man or the man I want to be is someone that can slit a throat and hold a baby in the same day. And I think that's also ma missing from masculinity in many ways. There's nothing wrong with being kind enough to show someone grace or forgiveness or help them through when they're struggling. Yeah, you could knock their head off, but you could also be a hand up and guide them and be a force of positivity to them through even the L word. You can love people and be masculine. You don't always have to be a savage. And I think that a true masculine man has the capability of being both violent and loving. And he's confident enough in himself that he doesn't have to always show aggression to get what he needs to get to. He's just capable of such. And to me, I think that's what the best men on the planet have. They have both. And they're not scared to show both. And I think that's a really important thing that young men need to know. It's okay not to be soft, but to love people, even firmly, even when it's not the popular thing to do. So, that's what I believe.